Hi, this is Tom from ZeroToFinals.com. In this video, I'm going to be going through Eustachian Tube Dysfunction. And you can find written notes on this topic at ZeroToFinals.com slash Eustachian Tube Dysfunction or in the ear, nose and throat section of the Zero to Finals Surgery book. So let's jump straight in. Eustachian tube dysfunction is when the tube between the middle ear and the throat is not functioning properly. The eustachian tube is mainly present to equalise the air in the middle ear and to drain fluid from the middle ear. When the eustachian tube is not functioning correctly or it becomes blocked, the air pressure in the middle ear cannot equalise properly and fluid cannot drain freely from the middle ear. The air pressure between the middle ear and the environment can become unequal and the middle ear can fill with fluid. Eustachian tube dysfunction may be related to a viral upper respiratory tract infection, to allergies, for example in hay fever, or to smoking. Let's talk about the presentation. Eustachian tube dysfunction may present with reduced or altered hearing, popping noises or popping sensations in the ear, a feeling of fullness in the ear, pain or discomfort in the ear, or tinnitus, which is an added sound or ringing heard in the ear. Symptoms tend to get worse when the external air pressure changes and the middle ear pressure cannot equalise to the outside pressure. This may happen, for example, during air travel, when the aeroplane is rising, climbing a mountain, or when scuba diving. Otoscopy, to visualise the tympanic membrane, may appear normal, but it's important to do this in order to exclude other causes, for example a middle ear infection or otitis media. Let's talk about investigations. Often eustachian tube dysfunction gives a typical set of symptoms and it's associated with a clear cause, for example a recent viral upper respiratory tract infection or hay fever. In this situation, the diagnosis can be obvious and investigations are not required as the symptoms will resolve with time or simple treatments. With persistent, problematic or severe symptoms, or where the cause is in doubt, investigations can be helpful to establish a diagnosis and the underlying cause. And these investigations can include tympanometry, which we'll talk about in more detail shortly, Performing audiometry can be used to assess the hearing in detail. Nasopharyngoscopy, which is where an endoscopic camera is put through the nose to the throat to inspect the eustachian tube openings. Or a CT scan to assess for structural pathology. Let's talk in more detail about tympanometry. Tympanometry involves inserting a device into the external auditory canal or the ear canal, creating different air pressures inside the canal and then sending sounds in the direction of the tympanic membrane. The amount of sound that's reflected back off the tympanic membrane is measured and plotted on a tympanogram which is a graph of the amount of sound that's absorbed, referred to as admittance, at different air pressures in the external auditory canal. The amount of sound absorbed by the tympanic membrane and the middle ear, which is not reflected back to the device, is known as admittance. Normally, the sound is absorbed most effectively when the air pressure in the ear canal is equal to the ambient air pressure in the environment. The ambient air pressure is equal to the middle ear pressure in healthy ears. When there is eustachian tube dysfunction, the air pressure in the middle ear may be lower than the ambient air pressure because the new air cannot get through the tympanic membrane to equalise the pressures. As a result, the tympanogram will show a peak admittance when the most sound is absorbed with negative ear canal pressures 
when the ear canal pressures are lower than the ambient air pressure. Let's talk about management. The treatment options for eustachian tube dysfunction include doing nothing and waiting for it to resolve spontaneously, which is likely to happen if the patient is recovering from a viral upper respiratory tract infection that's triggered the eustachian tube dysfunction. Performing the Valsalva maneuver by holding the nose and blowing into it to inflate the eustachian tube. Using decongestant nasal sprays, but this should only be done short term. Antihistamines and steroid nasal sprays may be helpful for allergies or rhinitis as the cause. And surgery may be required in severe or persistent cases. Otovent is an over-the-counter device where the patient blows into a balloon using a single nostril, which can help inflate the eustachian tube, clear blockages and equalise the pressure in the middle ear. Let's talk about surgery. There are three main surgical options for eustachian tube dysfunction. The first is treating other pathology that might be causing the symptoms, for example doing an adenoidectomy to remove enlarged obstructive adenoids. The second is to insert grommets, and we'll talk about this in more detail shortly. And the third is balloon dilatation eustachian tuboplasty, which we'll also talk in more detail about. Grommets are tiny tubes that are inserted into the tympanic membrane by an ear, nose and throat surgeon. This allows air or fluid from the middle ear to drain through the tympanic membrane, through the grommets, into the ear canal. Grommets are usually inserted using a local anaesthetic. The procedure is relatively safe with few complications, and the grommets typically fall out within 18 months. Balloon dilatation eustachian tuboplasty involves inserting a deflated balloon into the eustachian tube, inflating the balloon for a short period, for example two minutes, in order to stretch the eustachian tube, then deflating the balloon and removing it. Essentially, a balloon is used to stretch the eustachian tube. This is usually done under a general anaesthetic. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked the video, left a comment or subscribe to the channel, thank you so much, it really helps. Zero to Finals is not just a YouTube channel, there's also a website with detailed notes, illustrations and questions, an Instagram account where new questions are posted every day to help you test your knowledge, books, flashcards and much more. I also have a personal channel where I share my thoughts and tips on learning medicine, and you can find links to everything in the description of this video. See you next time.